out of the blue corner, representing Mohawk Valley MMA, Alex Morrow. Both these guys are making their pro debut tonight. They actually fought their uh, their last fought against each other as amateurs to make the pro debut tonight. And they both look like they leaned out quite a bit since that. And it's been six or seven months since that fight. Um, actually, it was commentated by Mike Tyson. Uh, it, and now, please walk off. That's fighting out of the red corner. But, um, representing yeah, like the cage, out. JSA. Give us the inside scoop on Lombard, 40 years old. So Max being 6'5", you know, he turned pro a little later, but... Um, a lot I mean, later. Yeah, yeah, a lot later. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the guy trains as hard as any of the 25-year-olds in our gym. When these guys fought the first time, Al did a really good job of getting inside Max's leg and holding him up against the cage and just dirty boxing for three rounds. There wasn't really any significant damage done. He just controlled the whole fight. Um, so it's going to be up to Max this time to, you know, establish his distance, keep Allen at, at bay. Um, I know they're both working on their grappling, um, so if, you know, maybe it winds up on the ground, who knows, we'll see. But uh, I'm sure, you know, they, they met once recently, so they've probably game planned quite a bit since then. Almero stalking. The cage, staring intently, even a little viciously at his opponent. Yeah, and he fights like a pit bull. I mean, he he throws big looping punches and gets inside and just beats his body. He's had some good fights that he's come out and really dominated with his distance. So it, it's going to be, it's going to depend on which Max shows up today. Almero in black loose fit fight shorts, Max Lombardo in black tight fight shorts. Whoa! The big difference is they can throw elbows now. Fight fans, this is a professional fight. They are five minute rounds, elbows to the face and body are legal, knees to the face are legal. That elbow you just saw there is legal. Easier said than done, but with Max having his back and his butt fully against the cage, if he could put his butt to be the main point of contact and kind of get his hips under him, try to circle away from the cage if he can. But again, big man pushing you up against the cage, not so easy to do that. Dig for that underhook on that side. Got the overhook here. Caught in an even worse spot than on the fence. Yep. Stuck in that corner. Our matchmaker, Joe Cuff, back in the day, fought in a four-sided cage once and got stuck in that corner on the ground. Never made it out.
exactly that dirty boxing we were yep. talking about the first time. I was putting his game plan to work. Al doing a fantastic job of shutting his opponent down right now. He's got brutal uppercuts to fight. Max is doing a great job too. Not taking a lot of damage. Now he's getting taken down. Can't stay here. Got Mel. Immediately got to move from here. Now there's going to be a lot of damage. Got to keep working up from here. Protect yourself. Keep working up. Now get off the cage. Got to get himself off the cage. I think he needs an underhook rather than that overhook. He's yep. going to have a little bit better leverage. Yeah, he's, he's digging, digging for, for it. it. Halfway mark down. Two minute thirty down, two thirty to go. Max has been training with Parker Porter over at Heavy Hitters a couple times a week, so he's used to, you know, he's used to scrapping with these big guys. Al's just doing a great job of keeping on in tight and on, putting his own game plan to work. And I always talk about head position. If you look at Alex, he's the shorter fighter. What he's doing is he's keeping the top of his head underneath Max's, yes. and he's pushing him up towards the top of the cage, so it makes him easier to take down, mm -hmm. and then you also know where to punch because you're punching right above the top of your head. He's yeah, doing a very, very good point. job controlling him against the cage. And Max needs to, needs to get his back not flat on the cage. Try to get your butt and try to pop your hips out if you can. Circle, dig for an underhook, dig for double underhooks. That just the overhook on that left side is not going to do anything for him. Because it leaves Alex an opportunity where he has position and he can still punch and stay active with the opposite hand. I know this is Max's worst fear coming into this fight. He said it was exactly like last time. And a lot of people, we talked about it earlier, a lot of people will boo and say this is boring, let's get going. This is exhausting to oh be in this God. position for both men. Yeah. Because the man holding him against the cage, too, you have to be active. Also, you sometimes in our sports see fighters who are stuck against the cage complaining to the referee saying, get me off of here, but that's not how it works. No. You want to get off that cage, fight your way off. Yep. And Alex is staying active, so there's there's no possibility they're going to separate them and bring him back to the center here. Oh, oh, a couple big elbows landed. Max is tough. He sure is. I was going to say, if he can get some more, some of his own offense, maybe sh sneak some short elbows in there. Yeah. We've got 20 seconds. Oh, there we go. Oh, I thought he was going to make a move to circle out. I know his game plan was coming in was to keep circle away and make Al chase him, but um, you know, it's easier said than done Yes, sometimes. definitely. Good job there. There you go. Good news. Good news. Oh, he didn't like those. Absolutely phenomenal round for Al. There's an evolved understanding of the unified rules around 10-9 and 10-8. I think that was probably a 10-8 round. I would agree. He didn't really move from his corner. They immediately went right to the wall, and he got taken down twice, and he was controlled the whole time and didn't land many strikes. So I would give it 10-8 as well. I agree. What do you think about Max coming out if it does wind up in that position next time? Max grabbing the plop. If I was his corner... His, connecting his hands together behind the head. I would say get away from the tie yeah. clinch. The tie clinch is not working for him. It's pretty much keeping Alex stationary, yeah. and he's working to the body, working to the head, and then every time he works to the head, Max is letting go of that clinch, and then Alex goes back to the body, works to the head, and Alex is... I, I preach it all the time anytime we do commentary that head control against the cage is so important because it elongates your opponent by putting your head under their chin and driving them towards the top of the cage. You know where to strike to the head, it's easier to strike to the body, and it's easier to get to the hips for a takedown, and Alex is doing that perfectly. So I would say he's working his corner, or he's working his game plan with his corner perfect, and Max needs to dig underhooks. He needs to get to underhooks and uh, try to use some of his length. Right here, he's already circling towards the cage. Yep. He needs to circle away from the cage. And he, there he is, yep. stuck on the cage. Right. 
first there's, several seconds. There's a very, and people are booing, but what they don't understand is if Alex is staying active, this is grueling to be here. Staying active, see that seam with head position? He's keeping his head right underneath the chin. Punching. And it's and it's smart. He's fighting a he's yep. fighting a guy who's six foot five inches tall when he's yep. under six. Most people booing are probably people who have never competed or <laughs> trained in their entire life. Also, yeah, so <laughs> you can generally count on that. Yeah. <laughs> and when he uh, easier said than done too. When you get Big when snatch punched. double. But when Alex separates to throw all those strikes, that is an opportunity for Max to throw a punch or two, throw an elbow, and circle and try to get yourself off the cage. At least creates a little bit of distance if possible. Alex Pace has slowed down just a little bit. Big Dan may even separate him if he doesn't see a little more action. That was a slick pickup. It's like Max is starting to swell up over his right eye. My face is starting to swell up from watching it. Halfway mark again, and it is a rinse repeat of round one, which, as we said, we believe may well be a 10-8 round. Alex Morrow doing a phenomenal job of shutting his six-foot-five-inch opponent down almost completely. Right there, he should have circled. Like again, easier said than done, but anytime there's space, he's got to try to move himself off of the cage. Being so tall, it's got to be so, oh, there he goes. There go. yep. Good first. It's got to be so hard to get and keep those underhooks. So now he's got an over-under position. Uh, right back to the tie. He should have kept that over-under. The overside, you would draw to the cage. Yep. The underside, you would shoot towards the sky and you try to circle him back towards the cage. The tight plum, that double collar tie is not working for him. He's it's getting punched good. over it, between it, under it. He's got he, he's got to Ooh, abandon that second. collar tie. Big Max is hurt. Yep. I'm sure he's exhausted at yeah. this point. Tough, tough man, but he's taking some shots. Just being extremely smart. I mean, yeah, he's sticking with what's working. He's staying extremely active, so they're not moving him to the center of the cage. He's doing everything that you should be in this position. Thirty seconds left in this round. Max Lombardo establishing he is a tough, tough, tough man. Very, very tough. Oof. That was a very useful little break. Yeah. <laughs> Convenient time to catch your breath. I think Max is hoping he takes all five minutes. Oh, we'll get a little look at that. And you. That was intended to hit the thigh. 
slipped up a little bit, hit the groin, completely unintentional. Gentlemen, did you see that? It's materially any different from round one. Would you call it 10-8 again in all likelihood? It's the exact so. same round over. And you know what? The, quite honestly, this is how the first fight went without the other. Same, same story. Al just really good at putting his game plan to use. Dan Mergliata is standing, looking very, very carefully at Max Lombardo. Making sure he's fit to continue. Oh. They may be having a discussion as to whether he wants to come out for this, the third and final round. It appears he does. True warrior. Yeah, I don't think there's any way he's going to say no. There's going to be a little glove touch out of respect here. Those are heavy shots. This, they're right in front of us, and those body shots are going to be very heavy. Two are speaking to each other in a not unpleasant fashion. Max has got to dig for some underhooks, get away from that tie clutch, get an underhook with his right arm because he has an overhook on the left and try to circle off of the cage. Alex is doing great of just working, like you were saying, right inside with those, under, those uh, uppercuts. Create space. I'll tell you what, if the people in the crowd booing were sitting where we were and they were hearing these shots land, they wouldn't be booing anymore. It's like the people that say, uh, you know, when it's on the ground, just stand up. <laughs> I love that one. Why didn't you just get up and punch yeah. him? If I was in there, I would just stand up. Keep digging for that underhook that he's doing. Hey, in all respect to him, he's a tough man. He's... Nice ball here. Good take down by Alex. Max. Part way up. Tough to take people down in MMA. Sometimes it's harder to keep them. They may stop, stop it soon. Yeah. If they don't, if he doesn't get up, they're gonna stop this fight. A short time, it's over. Phenomenal fight by both of these warriors. Max is one tough guy, man. Great job by Alex. Max is one tough dude. Yeah, I mean, Al's got 15 years on him. Yeah. 
Alex stood up, so he had the leverage of his hips, held on to his opponent, punched until the referee pulled him off. He just smothered him with pressure the whole time. Great head position, great control against the cage, and just stayed super active. Vicious, so vicious in the cage, and then for him to go over and do something like that at the end, you know, that, that says a lot about him as a person. Because I'll tell you what, man, he looked scary on there. Yeah, you looked great. You did look good. He, he barely took a shot. I mean, takes yeah. as many shots as in training. <laughs> Mom, I love you. I'm and it was against an opponent who knows his style, knew what was going to happen, yeah. prepared for it, and he still made it work. You're 100% right. Ladies and gentlemen, with two minutes and 53 seconds into round number three, here is your winner via TKO due to strikes, Alex Morrow. In the speech of the character of Max, I mean, the man's 40 years old. Like you said, well past the prime of when most people Alex. were competing. And yeah. First of all, congratulations. Me, so nothing to be ashamed of. You know, of. you guys had fought in the past, and he asked if you would do a rematch. First of all, I think it's really cool that you said yes, because most people will say no, and they won't give that person another chance. So that was really cool on your part. Um, he's a really tall dude. Like, people don't realize, I don't know how tall he is, but he's like six, I don't know, five or something. So somebody your height, you, you know, you getting in for some against the fence is a really good methodology to win the fight. So, you know, that was your game plan, obviously. Um, and you you hit him a lot with a lot of hard strikes. Did you think he was going to make it through three rounds of all those elbows and punches? Uh, first off, I know I know it, I beat your guy, but I knew Max was going to be tough. Everyone from Connecticut is tough. Just like this crowd, I really appreciate all of you coming out and supporting me. This was a dream since I was 12 years old to put on a professional pair of fight gloves. Max, thank you so much. Yes, he was very tough. I knew it was going to be a tougher fight. I saw him at the weigh yesterday and knew he was ready for a tough one. It took a, it took a lot of work. Uh, five rounds is definitely different from three. Uh, I got work to do. Hey, you looked awesome out there. Congratulations. Awesome job. This is the first fight my dad, ever since beating cancer, came out to watch me. Dad, if you're in the crowd, I love you. Tori, I love you. Thanks to all my sponsors. I love you all. Thank you so much. Uh, I love all of you, even though you booed me. I really appreciate all the support. You guys were an excellent crowd. I'll never forget this night because of you. Thank you. Hey, what congratulations. Nice yeah, Round of applause for Al Morrow. And thanks to my team, Mohawk Valley, Miss Martial Arts, Tough Holmes, best coach in the world.